Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, thank you so much for being here. My name is Jody Jones. I'm a senior program director at Mass Broadband Institute. Um, I'm just going to share a little bit about myself um, because I had a, the pleasure of meeting folks coming in, and we have lots of different sectors and interest areas that intersect with the, the digital equity work that Mass Broadband's doing. Um, so I just want to share that I come from the healthcare sector. I've been working in um, hospitals most of, my, most of my career and moved into this work really intentionally because of the connection um, to connectivity and public health. So um, it's a pleasure to meet all of you and to be here with you today in Greater Boston for this listening session. So our agenda for this morning, um, we're going to be introducing the work of MBI talking a little bit about um, the statewide planning process that's underway as part of the Internet for All effort. Also, we're going to do a deep dive into um, some digital equity and broadband programming in Greater Boston and also some data around existing conditions in the region. And then we'll have the pleasure of um, meeting with all of you and doing the, the listening portion of the meeting, which is doing breakout groups and um, having all of you give us input on, on um, this work. So a few ground rules to start with, um, meeting ground rules, please be fully present. Um, we're, we like to say take space and make space, so uh, make sure that everybody has a chance, chance to participate. And also please be open to others. Um, we have lots of different backgrounds and ideas represented here, and we're approaching this work from different perspectives, so um, just bring a level of respect to the conversation, which we're sure you all will. And now I have the, the pleasure of introducing my colleague Josh Eichen, who is our um, Program Development Director at MBI, and he's going to share a little bit about our organization and the work that we're doing. Awesome. Thank you, Jody. Good morning, folks. My name is Josh Eichen. I'm the Director for Program Development at Mass Broadband Institute. Um, for folks who may not be aware, uh, Mass Broadband Institute is the state broadband office for Massachusetts. We are a division of the Mass Tech Collaborative, um, and our mission is really to make sure that there is affordable, fast, reliable internet um, across the Commonwealth, um, and really as part of this work to close the digital divide. Um, we are here in Boston today as one of our stops on our listening tour. We're really excited to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the investments that we've already started to make in the Boston area, starting with the city of Boston, um, where we have made, uh, really excited to announce yesterday with the mayor, a $5 million investment that's going to go a long way towards supporting um, activities in public housing uh, in the city of Boston, expanding wicked free Wi-Fi and uh, really um, providing capacity uh, and support to more than 50 community-based organizations that are going to be working in different ways to close the digital divide with residents across the city. So really excited uh, and grateful for the support of our colleagues in the city of Boston, who I'll introduce in a moment here. Um, uh, regionally, uh, we are also supporting organizations like Tech Goes Home, uh, which is a nonprofit started in the city but now working across the greater Boston area, cities like Malden, Lynn, uh, Chelsea and Revere, and they're doing an amazing work uh, with providing digital literacy programming and also registering uh, residents for the Affordable Connectivity Program. Um, if folks aren't aware about the Affordable Connectivity Program, we have some tables that are out in the library today where we're signing people up. It's a $30 subsidy off your broadband bill, um, so please uh, talk to any staff members here about that um, if you would like to learn more. Um, and then finally, one of our other investments that we're really excited about is bringing free, no barrier, uh, no subscription uh, access to internet at affordable housing and public housing developments across the state. Um, so we're working in Revere at the Rose Pomona uh, housing development. Um, we're going to be providing more than 50 uh, units of family housing uh, with free internet um, and we are making this program available to all public and affordable housing operators across the state. There's information on the screen on how to get involved, um, but please feel free to talk to myself if you'd like to learn more about this program. Um, and then finally, we are also supporting municipalities to do plans. Um, we feel like planning is really an important step towards closing the digital divide and taking advantage of some of these resources. So we have uh, a municipal planning grant that's open right now. We have communities like Boston, Somerville, Watertown, Lynn, and Gloucester participating in the planning program. Um, but we're looking to sign up more communities. So if you live in a city or town in the region that you do not see on this list, please let your town officials know that they can sign up. It is a free program. Uh, we provide full grant funding for this, uh, and we're actively recruiting more municipalities to participate. And then where, oops, where is all this going? Um, so all this is pointing towards 
uh, a significant amount of, of investment that's going to be coming from the federal government. Um, so when it's all said and done, Massachusetts is set to receive around $400 million that we're going to be using to close the digital divide, make sure that every household and resident has access to the internet um, that is reliable and affordable for their needs. And with that, uh, I'm going to now turn it over to my colleague, Santiago Garces, who is the Chief Information Officer, or in, is it Information or Innovation? Information. Information Officer for the City of Boston to talk a little bit more about the city's work. Thank you, Santi. Thank you all, and thank you for coming. My name is Santiago Garces. I am the Chief Information Officer for the city, and I lead the Department of Innovation and Technology. Um, we know that technology is really important, not in of itself, but because it allows us to connect with family members that live far away. It gives access to educational opportunities to learn new skills. It allows you to get access to medicine, to government services. Um, and we are committed to work with our partners in the Commonwealth and with you all to understand how is it that in the city of Boston, even though we've done tremendous amount of work in connecting people, we, we were checking the numbers the other day and since 2020 to 2022, the number of households without internet went from 32,000 households to 14,000 households. So we're making really good strides in our community, but there's still gaps. And we know that there's gaps in the quality of service. There's uh, still families that struggle accessing internet services and devices that are affordable. So there's a lot of work to be done. And we need your help because what you share here will make it into the state plan. And that plan and what that plan says helps program the federal funding that's going to come next. So your voices are gonna help design how millions of dollars are going to be spent. And you can see there's not a lot of people in the room right now. So every one of your perspectives matter in helping shape and guide how is it that the money is going to be spent. Um, I just get onto the, the, the core part, but I just want to acknowledge that we have a lot of really amazing people from our department that work across the board to help you um, get connected. Uh, we have our new uh, digital equity officer, Brian Donahue, who starts on Monday. Um, we have people from the cable and broadband and digital equity uh, team and obviously our partners at the library and other city agencies. So I just wanna say thanks to them. So um, onwards, we're excited. Share with us, share where you, even if you're representing family members or community members that aren't able to be here, uh, we need the perspectives of, of everybody to shape the, the, the plan and, and help us understand how is it that we direct our, our work. So, thank you very much. Santi, thank you. And it's, um, that was the perfect introduction to the next topic that we have on the agenda, which is the statewide planning process. So Josh shared that the funding opportunity that's coming, it is a meaningful investment that's coming to the state to help us solve the digital divide and um, ensure that everyone has connectivity. And a core piece of, the, of, the, of unlocking those funds is the, the planning process. So we are in the process right now, the state is, of developing an internet for all plan. It's actually two plans um, that will be uh, developed over the next couple of months and submitted by the end of the year. So the, the um, plans will include a vision for what digital equity is for the state. It will um, identify barriers that exist around the state to digital equity. So where are there um, problems or, or certain populations or areas that are having trouble with, with access um, and adoption? There's also an assessment of what's going well and what's working well as it relates to digital equity across the state. Um, and then the plans will also include strategies that build on data, reports, and plans, which we'll talk about in, in a few minutes as well. But the planning process is critical, and we really are trying to get the perspective and understand the priorities of all 351 communities across the state. And um, you being here today is a, is a first and important step in helping us shape the plan. So here are three ways that people can get involved in the statewide planning process. The first is that we have an asset map that's online 
There is on the um, broadband website, on the Mass Broadband website, there's an Internet for All page that's been created for this effort. And on that page, there is an asset map that folks can go in. If there are organizations in your community that you know about, if there are um, data, if there's data or reports that share information about the state of digital equity in your region, um, activities, people even, if there are people who are like super champions for this work, we want to know about them, we're going to be creating an ecosystem map for the state. So we're trying to understand where, this, where the assets are around the state because we're really building an ecosystem here and building a coalition around this work. So the asset map is critical in us understanding that and we know that knowledge is best if we get that um, from the ground up. We also have a public, public survey that's um, out right now, and we're very happy that we've gotten a lot of engagement, but we still would like more. And this is a way for individuals to talk about their experience um, with internet access and affordability as well. And then listening sessions. So we're coming to the tail end of what's been a month-long roadshow across the state to all the different regions. Um, we'll be in Greenfield next Tuesday for a, um, for a rural event, and then we'll be finishing with a central session, a virtual se se um, session in the central region Thursday of next week. So if you have friends that live in Greenfield or live in the central region of the state around Worcester, please let them know to participate in those final listening sessions. Um, but that's not that's not the end. So we're in the in yeah. right now we're in the listening session phase. We're doing focus groups. We have our survey live. In the next couple of months, we'll be developing the actual strategic plan. So we'll be writing the plan and doing and taking all of the input we've collected and turning it into action. And then in November, there will be a co public comment period. So we ask that if you're here today, you stay engaged with us and come back and participate as we, we ask for public comment on those plans. Um, and then this will also continue. We'll be submitting at the end of the year in 2024 um, there's going to be opportunities for additional community engagement. So we will be announcing all of the, the locations in the state that will be eligible for funding. There will be a, a public process, an opportunity for the public to say, we have, um, we have locations that are not on the map that should be, if they're not served or if they're considered underserved, meaning they don't have um, um, good enough access to the internet. People can come to us and say, or um, municipalities will be able to come to us and say, we need to add additional locations to make sure they're eligible for funding. So there'll be more to come on that. This is a, there's a lot involved here, and we're not expecting everyone to remember. We'll be out there talking to folks about this, but we just want to put it on the radar that this work is going to continue into 2024, and we hope you'll stay involved. Um, now we're going to share a little bit about existing conditions and some of the data around access and affordability and availability in the Boston region. So Josh is going to go over that part. Awesome, thank you, Jody. Um, so uh, we're gonna dive into sort of what's happening now in the Boston region. What are we seeing through some of the research that we've done so far? Um, before I get there, I just wanna level set with everybody to make sure that um, we're all using the same definition of what is digital equity. Uh, so uh, we at the Mass Broadband Institute use the National Digital Inclusion Alliance's definition, which says that digital equity is a condition in which all individuals, communities, have the information, information technology capacity needed for full participation in our society, democracy, and economy. Digital equity is necessary for civic and cultural participation, employment, lifelong learning, and access to essential services. So what we take away from this statement is really that digital equity is not just about getting somebody onto the internet. Digital equity is about all the, the ripple effects of being able to access and use technology um, in ways that are beneficial and needed for that individual or household. Taking it one step further, when we think about how to achieve digital equity, we think about the, these three determining factors of digital access. So those are a connection. Does an individual or a household have an internet connection? Can they literally get online? And then is that connection fast enough for that household? And is it affordable for that household? Whether or not an individual or household has an adequate device. You know, we all walk around with a, with a smartphone in our pocket, which is great for texting and and videos and that kind of thing, but if you need to take a telehealth appointment or attend online classes or apply for a job, it may not be sufficient. So making sure folks have a, a laptop or device that's sufficient, as well as a router, which is really the thing that might determine how fast someone's internet is. And then finally, literacy, which is really like the most expansive component of the, of the three determining factors, which ranges from everything from being able to use technology equipment, being able to open a laptop, sign into an email account, all the way up to ensuring that that equipment functions properly and then evaluating information online, which we know is so important today. So what's kind of happening in the Boston region? 
Um, right now, we're looking at this uh, across the state, but here in the Boston region, um, from data that we have available from the U.S. Census, we see that you know about 14% or 134,000 households do not have a computer, a laptop or a desktop computer. Another 167,000 households, or 17% of the region, do not have a broadband internet subscription. And then there's sort of the, the middle section here of the Venn diagram, that 89,000 households, or 9%, that neither have a broadband subscription or an adequate device. And so these are really the, the households and people that we're trying to reach through this work. And we also acknowledge you know, that, that these households are made up of folks that have experienced disproportionate impacts um, in, when it comes to digital equity for a variety of socioeconomic, geographic, and uh, population-specific reasons. Um, so we take that all into account as we work through this process. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the survey that we have out now. Uh, so Jody mentioned our survey. It's out there. It's online right now. Um, as of today, I think we have over 7,000 responses. So this data is just a tiny bit out of date. Um, but here in the Boston region, we have over 1,000 responses, um, really from a range of different population groups. So, you know, I mentioned, so, you know, some, some of the, those folks earlier, but we're looking at making sure that we hear from aging individuals, veterans, people of color, households with limited English, um, individuals with disabilities, low-income households, and residents in rural areas as priority populations to focus on for this work. So what are we hearing and what are we seeing? Um, so I'm going to first talk about um, access to the internet and quality of service. Uh, so here in the Boston region, what we're hearing, um, we're seeing is that there are 55% of municipalities that only have access to one internet service provider. Um, so that limits uh, uh, options um, and can have an impact on consumer experience. From what we hear from our survey, 26% of respondents statewide are telling us that their internet service is not good enough to meet their needs. Um, and the shading on the map indicates sort of parts of the region where this issue is more prevalent than others. The darker areas, the issue is sort of more, more expansive. Um, we also are seeing that there are about 1,000 locations in total in the Boston metro area that are considered either unserved or underserved. Um, and so really what this means is that, you know, these are locations that will be first in line to receive federal funding from an infrastructure perspective. And we're looking at this across the region. Jody mentioned uh, the challenge process, um, so I'll talk a tiny bit more about that here. Um, but essentially, uh, probably in early spring to late, late spring, early summer of next year, MBI is going to be running a challenge process whereby we will be essentially crowdsourcing data for folks to tell us that either their household or business is not served, cannot get the internet, or that the internet is so poor that they need additional infrastructure investments. Um, so really, it's an opportunity for us to hear more from you all, and then we are going to look at all of those uh, responses individually and make a determination about which, uh, if there are locations that we want to move into the unserved or underserved category. So as Jody mentioned, we'll be sharing a lot more information about this process as it starts to materialize um, again later this year and early next, um, so please stay tuned for, for more on this. All right, moving on to affordability. So, you know, beyond being able to, you know, literally get the internet and, and making sure it's high quality, we hear that affordability is across the board a huge issue for folks. So one in three respondents to our survey right now say that they have at least some difficulty paying for their internet bill. And the average broadband, the average lowest price cost broadband plan in the Boston metro area is $42 a month, which we still understand may be out of reach for some households uh, without the ACP subsidy. And then finally, there's adoption gaps. So whether or not an individual or household chooses to subscribe to the internet. Um, and we are seeing that in the greater Boston region, uh, the locations that have the, you know, the highest impact on, a, on or lack of adoption are in the city of Boston itself uh, and the surrounding communities like Chelsea and Revere uh, and Everett. Um, and we understand from our survey that affordability continues to be the thing that drives adoption, nearly 50% of folks who do not have internet connection say they don't have it because they cannot afford it. So in addition to all that data I just shared, um, which is a lot, we're also looking at community anchor institutions like uh, educational facilities, healthcare locations, libraries like we're here in today, community centers, public housing, uh, and museums, cultural and religious institutions. We're looking at where these places are, 
what kind of organizations are working in them, because we see these anchor institutions as being really critical parts of closing the digital divide as well. Um, we are collecting information on these anchors through our asset mapping process that Jody mentioned earlier. Right now we have 56 assets collected from the greater Boston region, which is awesome. Some examples include the Timothy Smith Network, which is a great organization that works out of Boston that does technology training classes, and La Alianza Hispana, which is a community organization serving the Spanish-speaking community um, with educational programs and beginner to advanced computer classes. So we continue to collect information on these assets and we'll hopefully hear from you today about who the organizations in your networks and your communities are that we should be thinking about. All right, so that is a lot of information and now I'm going to turn it over to Joey to introduce the breakout section, which is really uh, our opportunity to hear from you. Great, thanks Josh. And I want to mention um, the website that we've, we for the public survey and also the asset map, broadband.mastech.org. It's backslash internet for all, and that's our internet for all page for the state. So if you're looking, I mean, you can Google Mass Broadband Institute. I'm sure most people in here can do that. But if you wanted to record or, or take a picture of the website, this is where all the information is related to this effort. So if there's, um, if you want to stay in touch. And we do have a mailing list. We send out um, regular communications monthly. We have social media channels. All of those uh, channels are great ways to stay connected to this effort going forward. So we'll hope, we hope that you'll follow us and sign up for the e-news and um, stay informed on Internet for All.